Hey everyone, welcome back for Domain 2. Uh, just like last time, we're going to be going over the guide page by page. So it would be best if you all followed along. Alright, let's get started. We're on page 16. Basically, there's not that much on this page, but know everything. Know all the terms, the key concepts, very important. Commit them to memory. Next page, 17. Yeah, 16, 17. Mm, important terms or concepts are the common medications, particularly beta blockers. Uh, the cardiovascular system, it's, it's a pretty big topic. They talk about it a lot and how to deal with people or clients with cardiovascular or heart problems or issues. So one term or and one thing they talk about a lot are beta blockers and how it affects the body and how that implicates working out and creating your workout program. The next section is the cardiorespiratory assessments. Um, some of the major things that you would want to know what the three minute step test is, the YMCA three minute step test as well as, it's on the next page, page 18, the Rockport Walk Test. And when you would use the YMCA test and when you would use the Rockport Walk Test, depending on senior citizens, are they old, do they have issues walking up steps, and so on and so forth. Know the difference and when is more appropriate than the other. We are still on page 18. The physiological assessments, the two big terms here are systolic and diastolic blood pressure. Know the difference between the two. Um, know and be familiar with what the radial pulse is, the cartoid pulse, and the resting heart rate. Next page, 19. All right. So that brings us into the overhead squat assessment and the postural assessment. You know what, we're gonna save that just in a couple minutes because I wanna dive a little deeper into that portion of it. But let's go on to the last page of domain two, which is page 25. And this is, what is it? Key concepts, uh, what fitness professionals can and cannot do. There's not that much on this page, know everything on it. There you go. Uh, reassessment. I believe I had a couple questions on when you would reassess a client um, every four weeks or when major changes in programming are occurring, change in lifestyle, work, job. Um, yeah, just be sure you know everything on here. All right, overhead squat assessment. If you've seen other YouTube videos, they, and it is really important, but it seems like they stress it a little too much and make it like it's one of the most hardest things ever um, that you need. I mean, you definitely need to focus and concentrate on it, but it's like a doom and gloom scenario. It's like, oh, it's the overhead squat assessment. You know, if you're not going to know any of this, you're going to completely fail the test. You're going to be the worst horrible trainer ever. You know, no, it's nothing like that. Um, you know, don't get so overwhelmed. There are a lot of tables, a lot of muscles that probably, I mean, I didn't know, but it's hard to even pronounce. Um, it starts on page 19 of the guide and it goes on to page 24. Yeah, it's all just tables and tables and tables of what your overactive and underactive muscles are. Um, I won't go into what the overhead squat assessment is, but by the time you get here and you look at it in the book, you should know what it is. Basically, it's an assessment before and seeing what your body compensations are, muscle compensations are, and where you're off and asymmetrical and so on. But yeah. I'm going to start off by saying study the overhead squat assessment section or the table first because there's static postural assessments, um, you have your pronations, 
distortion syndrome, lower cross syndrome, upper cross syndrome, and then they talk about all these different things before they get into the overhead squat assessment. I recommend you jump right into memorizing the overhead squat assessment table. And that starts on page 21. And if you look, it goes at page 21, 22, um, different positions and different assessments and it goes over what's overactive and underactive muscles and yes you do need to memorize and know exactly what muscle is overactive when you have an excessive forward lean right um, you do need to know and there's no way of getting around it and what I suggest you do and this is how I did it and I'm a very visual person and when I tried to memorize this, I just laid it out like this and pictured these tables. And in my head, when I'm trying to remember what the overactive or underactive muscle is, I kind of actually visualize this table. And then you start seeing patterns. For instance, when they ask for an underactive muscle, um, you're never going to have, let's say, the gastrocnemius or the soleus in or consider an underactive muscle and you know like so when you approach the test and you approach a question and they ask for what's the underactive muscle you can automatically eliminate the soleus the basic dairy calf muscles because um, they're never going to be an underactive muscle all right so that's the way how i approached it okay there are some muscles that are never going to be underactive at least for the overhead squat assessment, and there are some muscles that are never going to be asked for overactive. All right, so that kind of eliminates, okay, that brings a much clearer picture. And also, when you go down, you can see how muscles, they, the overactive, underactive muscles, they repeat themselves. And sometimes they're overactive, sometimes they're underactive. And so, in my head, I'm drawing these lines. I'm drawing these lines and trying to visualize a pattern. Um, there's like cues to help me remember. And when I was studying for it, I didn't really, uh, how do you say it? I didn't really call on the term. I first imagined the table and where it would be. And then it starts coming. And then you, you draw the lines. You do, it's basically like connect the dots and it starts coming together. And a lot of suggestions that other YouTube videos that I've watched is go look it up. If you don't know what an anterior tibialis is, <laughs> I didn't know, go look it up. And it helps you visualize where on your body it is. And so when it asks you what's an overactive, underactive muscle, you're not going to be like um, answering something where it's supposed to be an upper body, but it's an anterior tibialis. It's on your shin, right? So, yeah, it's, if you don't know a muscle, look it up. Get a visual imagery in your head of where it is on your body, and it'll help understanding what is overactive and underactive for you know all these different scenarios like arms falling forward, your feet turning out, your knees moving inward. Um, Let's see, what else? And yeah, I mentioned before that all once you memorize the overhead squat assessment, then you roll into all the other tables and all the different types of assessments like the single leg squat, the pushing assessment. It, it's the same muscles that are being brought up again. And it's like, yeah, one funny recommendation that I, when I was watching the YouTube and beginning to prep for it is, you know, actually do the motion, you know, do this squat assessment. When it asks you about your lower back arcing, just arc it a little bit and then kind of feel what muscles are being activated and what muscles are involved. It really does help out. I mean, it might look and feel stupid, you know, you're just sitting. I mean, literally, I was at the test. And I was turning my feet in and out, trying to remember which muscles, you know, it's, it's, it makes sense and it helps out a lot. So do that. Um, try to visualize 
and figure out different patterns. Um, the gluteus is never going to be considered an overactive muscle, right? Uh, because it's in the underactive column. If you look straight down the underactive column, it's, it's only on this side. So yeah, it's a process of elimination. And guys, when you take the test, most often than not, it's multiple choice, right? And they give you four choices. You'll easily, automatically be able to eliminate one or two because they're just off the wall. Absolutely makes no sense. Um, okay, what's a muscle? What's the overactive muscle when your knees turn in? Then they'll sometimes have latissimi dorsi, your lats. Of course, it's like, it's not even associated. Your feet are down there and your lats are up here. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Do your best to memorize it. And whatever method helps you memorize, I do visualization. I picture the table. I kind of put certain muscles where they're always going to be. So it's less to memorize. It's less stress. I mean, it's not less stress, but, you know, less effort. And what else? There we go. And performance assessment. We're on page 21 now. It's the Davies test, the shark skill test, bench press test, squat test, push-up test, left test. Be sure to know what those are. Um, they do come up on the test uh, every now and then. I think I got asked a few questions. So be sure you know what each of those are, when to use them, um, with particular demographics or a particular client, and which is more, most appropriate. And yeah, that's it. But again, this overhead squat assessment, going with a clear mind, clear head, it is overwhelming, it's quite intimidating, especially because you're trying to pronounce words you never even freaking heard or even know how to say. Just take it day by day. Um, do one body part, one assessment at a time, one row at a time. You know, just make sure you get that row, know what the muscles are overactive, underactive, and keep you know, going through that in your head until you're confident, then you move on to the next row, the next assessment, the next distortion or whatnot. Um, just don't try to do it all at once. It's not going to work. I mean, it's just going to be really challenging to just try to memorize everything all at once. So that's about it for domain two. If you have any questions, be sure to hit me up, send me a message. And I could probably go into a little more detail with you. I did, um, if you ask me a question and there's some more help that you'd like. But um, yeah, thanks for your time. And I'll be coming out with the tutorial for Domain 3 here really soon. Thanks.